Hey folks, it's William with All Solar Texas. If you're looking into going solar, but you're not sure what the various solar programs are that's available in Texas, well, you've come to the right place. I'll break them down for you in this video. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for joining today but before we dive in please make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to tap on that notification bell that keeps you up to date with all the latest energy news that we produce here on the channel and it does help us out with youtube a little bit lastly please reach out to us give us a call send us a text email check out our website all right so before we go into the different types of solar programs that are currently available for Texas solar customers, we first need to understand a little bit about the Texas utility market. So the Texas utility market is a very unique animal, uh, especially when you look nationally. I've worked for the utilities for years. That's my background. I came out of the utility. And so it's a very unique situation that we have here in Texas when compared to the rest of the nation. First off, we have a combination of what's called regulated utilities and deregulated utilities. Well, about 20 years or so ago, electric prices were going up very very quickly and um, we really couldn't stay on top of it as uh, a customer base so uh, these utilities kind of ran more of a monopoly style where you had certain parts of the grid that were fully owned and operated by a certain utility and they had a complete monopoly over that area and so we saw rising costs and prices of electricity so the Texas government the legislator stepped in and decided that they were going to put forth a bill which ended up passing to opt into a deregulation regulated state if you were in parts of the regulated uh, parts of the state. Well, that left us with two primary forms of utility. One is regulated and one is deregulated. So what's the difference if you're a solar customer between being in a regulated utility space versus a deregulated utility space? Well, first off, if you're in a regulated utility space, you just have one option. That's it, that's all you got. You have one option for a utility. So that's normally gonna be your co-ops um, or if you live in a city like a, I do in College Station or Bryan, then we have our own municipal electric uh, provider here, electric utility. So no matter what we do or what we want, it doesn't matter. Now, if you're living in a deregulated space, really you're looking at a nice competitive market. You have different retailers that are vying for your business. So they're gonna create certain incentives to help make sure that you sign up and commit to their program. Now utilities across Texas, whether or not they're regulated or, or in a deregulated area, are both under the governance of ERICOT. ERICOT is the Electric Reliability Council of Texas. Uh, they have four primary functions. Uh, they are to provide a competitive uh, space for the wholesale market, which is how you buy and sell electricity. They're to facilitate a competitive market um, in the retail space to make sure that there's not one company that's gouging a customer way above and beyond what's the normal market. They want to ensure access to open transmission, so being able to uh, export and import electricity from uh, across the state through multiple different types of generation sources. And then lastly, they need to maintain the system reliability meaning that they are there to govern over the capacity and the demand and make sure that these utilities that own these electric assets are making the types of capital investment that's what's needed to make the system more reliable. The problem is this, they're just another governing agency. And so now as a customer, I'm forced to be in either a deregulated space or a regulated space Either way, I'm forced to be connected to a utility in some way, form, or fashion, which means that I'm still having to pay a premium to get my power. I'm having to pay a utility even during an outage because I'm still connected to the grid. So year after year, I'm being charged more and more money for my electric rates, um, but I'm not getting any more value out of it. I continue to have uh, blackouts and power outages and now we see rolling brownouts now that it's uh, coming up on the summertime and the high heat. So as a customer, I'm continuing to pay more and more and more year after year to these utilities that just continue to fail us time and time again, offering less reliability of the grid, raising prices without us getting any additional value. Now, what's the difference between a utility and a utility or electric retailer? Well, if you're in a deregulated space, you still have one utility servicing a certain part of that 
uh, service territory. They are the utility that owns the assets, they own the wires, they own the generation. So that's like your Encore or your center point. And then you have the retailer like the TXU or the Reliant and they're responsible for making sure that they supply that product to a customer base. So they're the ones that are going to be putting together some different solar programs, um, trying to create different incentives so that you the customer if you decide to go solar are wanting to go with them and choose one of their plans. But the utility still is there and the utility is still forced uh, to make those investments into their grid to make it more reliable or to expand its capacity, uh, which as we know takes years and years and years for them to do, meanwhile passing those costs down to you. So why is it so important to know how the Texas grid is kind of structured and what my different types of utilities are as a potential solar customer? Well, the bottom line is this. Just because you decide to go solar does not mean that you're going to pay a fixed certain per amount just for your solar system and never have any type of utility costs whatsoever ever again. All right, that is fantasy. Uh, What's really difficult about this particular market is that no matter which area you're in in Texas, whether or not you're in a regulated space or a deregulated space, every single utility, every single retailer, every single co-op and municipality has a different set of rules when it comes to solar programs that they offer their customers. So All Solar Texas, when you give us a call, we actually ask what type of utility uh, that, that, that you work with. Uh, do you work with a co-op? Do you work with a municipality? Are you in a deregulated space? And then we go through and we learn everything about that particular space that you're in within the utility market. And we identify what are all of those costs and charges? What's the process for getting connected to solar? What can you as the consumer end up uh, paying anyway, even though you install solar, but you're still going to have some type of base pay commitment to the utility. So we work through all of that with the customer. One of the things that is, is some of the worst tactics that I've seen in this industry is salespeople trying to tell you that once you decide to go solar that you're never going to have any utility bills ever again. That's just not true. Even if we put you know, as much solar as possible on your roof and you're, you know, producing at 150% of what your current consumption is, you still may have some costs with your local utility. So what are some of those costs? Well, the utilities oftentimes will just charge you a base monthly fee. That's just money that they charge you month to month because you're still connected to the grid. Because remember, when you decide to go solar, but not off grid, you're still grid tied. So you're connected to the grid and they want to make sure that they're getting some money from you for some of that maintenance and repair that they have to do on those um, assets that they own. So oftentimes you'll find some kind of base charge. Second thing we want to look at is what are the costs of importing and exporting electricity uh, based on that particular utility or retailer. Uh, some programs uh, are offering one-to-one -one net metering, which means if you are pushing power to the grid, you're essentially overproducing, that that utility or retailer will pay you the exact same amount um, in some type of credit or in some cases actual money that you would be spending if you were buying that same power from them. That's called a one-to-one net metering or buyback program. Um, you'll see where it's maybe 10 cents or 13 cents per kilowatt. Whatever the case is, the utility will have that as part of the agreement. Now, uh, something to look out for when you're looking at uh, what type of solar program is going to be best for me is not just what that base monthly charges and it's not just whether or not it, the utility or the retailer offers a one-to-one -one buyback. But one of the other things that we need to look at is whether or not those credits roll over month to month or year to year. So some co-ops will only allow you to bank those net metering credits month to month, meaning that there is no rollover. So during the summer when you're overproducing electricity, they're only going to give you credits on your aspects of the bill for that month. And then you lose any overproduction month to month. And that really hurts you in the winter when you're not able to produce as much. And so now you're still stuck with the power bill and you're wondering how that happened. Well, you really need to understand and read the fine print. Is net metering offered by this retailer or this solar program or this co-op um, on a month to month basis or does it roll over and accrue over maybe a 12 month basis? Those are really some of the other things that you need to be careful about. Otherwise, you're gonna end up paying a bill and maybe even overbuilding your solar system at an additional cost with Without you seeing any benefit.
Another thing you need to keep a lookout for are certain caps. Um, some utilities and retail solar programs will say you only are uh, able to get net metering up to a certain capacity. Maybe it's a 50 kW system. So they put a cap on your system. If you were to build above a 50 kW system, you're not gonna get any additional net metering credits or buyback credits. Um, you have to have a system that's maybe 50 kW or below, and that's the only way that you qualify. So there's a lot of different nuances to these things. So one of the things that I always encourage customers to do and that we do with them is we go online with them. And so we go online to actually the utility, the co-op, the uh, um, municipal uh, electric utility or the retailer of choice. And we actually download the solar program that's offered for that particular utility. And we go through and we read it with the customer. So I actually highlight, hey, this is what's good about this. Or hey, here's what's bad about this. Or uh, just so that you're aware you're going to still have have this monthly base fee and here's what it's going to look like. Every single customer lives in a very unique environment with regard to their electric utility. So it's not all going to be the same across the board. So there's no one you know, answer, one size fits all shoe, but there definitely is something that you could do about it as a customer. Before you even call someone um, to evaluate whether or not solar makes sense for you, make sure that you go and you do the research that's needed or just give us a call. If you give us a call, we do that research for you so we'll actually walk you through it and we'll explain what those costs are going to be so that you get a realistic picture of what solar is actually going to cost you because it's not just going to be the sticker price but it may cost you additional amounts of money depending upon the type of utility that you're in all right that about wraps it up for today but before we take off please make sure to drop a comment below and let us know if you have any other particular questions about solar programs or or about utilities and how they work reach out to us email us call us we're here to help we are your energy experts and we can't wait to hear from you thank you and god bless